Hello fellow intelligent investors, my name is René Zalman and today I want to talk about the difference just 1% can make in the world of investing. So here's what I will do. I have reached out to you on Instagram as I wanted to take a look at an authentic example. Consider the situation of a real person and fortunately some of you responded to my request. So today we will take a look at Andy's situation and demonstrate the power of compound interest and the difference just 1% can make over the course of a person's working life. And I will explain what I mean by that in a second, but spoiler alert, a difference of just 1% can li literally be worth millions of dollars. So without further ado, let's get started. Have you ever wondered how you can make your hard earned money work for you? Have you ever dreamed of building generational wealth and leaving a legacy? My name is René Zellman and I'll teach you how you can manage and invest your money with confidence, a long-term vision and without losing your mind. Join me on my journey of intelligent investing and learn how smart people can compound their money effectively and accumulate wealth. Alright, so as I said in the introduction, I reached out to you a few days ago on Instagram in order to find someone who is willing to share yeah, his or her age, his or her monthly income, savings rate, planned retirement age, and his or her starting balance. And someone actually responded, and we're going to use this person's financial life to illustrate what a difference of just 1% can make yeah, on your wealth building journey. So what do you mean by a difference of 1%? Well, when it comes to the magic of compounding, there are exactly four variables that will determine your long-term outcome. Yeah, and playing around with these variables can have a tremendous impact and can also be quite eye-opening when it comes to your current lifestyle. So what are these four variables? Well, there is your starting balance. So when you start to invest, do you already have some savings, some investments? Or are you starting from scratch? Then there are your monthly contributions your investment horizon, so how long are you investing for, and finally the rate of return that you are able to achieve yeah, with your investments. So let's consider one of the persons that was willing to share some basic financial information with us. Let's call him Andy. So here's Andy's starting situation. Andy's 25, he's working as an engineer and his current take home pay is $3,150 per month of which he currently puts away $950 each month, which is actually a pretty good savings ratio of almost 33%. And he plans to retire at age 65, and he already has $25,700 in savings and investments. So that is his starting balance. So let's assume Andy invests in a broad market index fund that will generate a compound annual growth rate of 9% over the course of the next couple of decades. Andy will continue to put away $950 each month for the next 37 years and enjoy these returns until he eventually retires at age 65. Considering Andy's income, his savings ratio and his investment horizon, I think it is fair to say that he will likely have built quite a comfortable nest egg for himself and his family when he retires. I don't even need a compound interest calculator for that assumption. But let's have nonetheless a look at the cold hard truth and run the numbers. So if we just head to the calculator site.com and plug in Andy's number in a compound interest calculator, then we will learn that Andy's net worth will grow to roughly $4,077,000 over the course of the next 37 years. Which is pretty impressive, I have to say. Now, the premise of this video is to showcase what a difference of just 1% can make you. 1% doesn't sound like much, right? But I'm about to show you that 1% can indeed make a massive difference on your wealth building journey. So what do I mean by a difference of 1%? Well, let's apply the 1% to each of our compound interest variables. And let me just say this, if we add just 1% to the last variable that we will talk about in this video, this will by, by far have the most impressive impact. But let's start with the first one. Obviously, you cannot change or play around with your starting capital. Andy has $25,700 and he cannot just snip his finger and magically have a larger starting base. That's not how it works. So let's focus on the other three variables. 
and we will start with Andy's monthly savings. So how much is Andy contributing each month? We said $950. And if we do the math here, then Andy's current savings ratio is roughly 30%. Now, what if Andy was able to increase that savings ratio to 31%? This would mean that Andy would need to stash away $976.5 instead of $950 each month. That's basically another $7 per week. Well, saving an additional $6 to $7 per week would give Andy an almost additional $100,000 in retirement. $4.17 million. Isn't that impressive? But we are not quite done yet. This might actually be the least impressive part that we will cover in this video. So if we now focus on the second variable, how long is Andy investing for? Well, Andy's investment horizon is pretty long already, 37 years. And after such a long time, this is where the beauty of compounding really starts to kick in. So I'm fairly confident that extending this investment horizon by just another 1% can have quite an impact. So let's do the math here. 37 years translates to exactly 444 months. Isn't that a nice number? So what if Andy would just add, oh, wait 1% longer before stopping his well, wonderful yeah, investing journey? 1% translates to 4.4 months. So let's be conservative here and just add another four months before yeah, Andy starts his retirement life. Again, after 444 months, Andy would be sitting on a nice $4,171,000. After 448 months, however, he'd have another $120,000 and would be sitting on a nice $4.3 million. All right, this was the second variable. Now, as promised, our last variable will have the most significant impact on Andy's wealth building journey. What if instead of investing passively, Andy invests actively and picks individual high quality stocks whenever they are available at attractive entry prices. Picking stocks obviously isn't easy and I believe that the vast majority of people are better off just sticking to yeah, dollar cost averaging into a broad market ETF. But some people indeed do better than the market by essentially sticking to a three-step investment framework that yeah, legendary investor Terry Smith characterized as buy good companies, don't overpay and do nothing. Obviously, we don't know what the broad market will return going forward. But for the sake of this video, we chose 9%. Obviously, we don't have a crystal ball and this is quite a significant assumption that we had to make here. But as you probably know, historically, the US stock market returned 9.8% annually. So we are already quite conservative here. Let's assume Andy can do just 1% better than 9%. 10%. If we plug that into our compound interest formula, Andy can once again significantly boost his yeah, long-term outcome. Instead of $4.3 million, Andy's net worth will grow to $5.7 million, adding about $1.4 million to yeah, his final result. So what's the bottom line here? Well, your starting capital, your regular monthly contributions, your investment horizon and of course your compounded annual investment returns. These four components represent the engine of capital growth within your portfolio. Unfortunately, you cannot influence the starting capital available to you, but you can influence all of the other components of your wealth building engine. And doing just 1% more, waiting just 1% longer, saving just 1% more, well, all of this combined. So 1% patience, 1% sacrifice, and maybe 1% skill. We'll get Andy from roughly $4 million by age 65 to roughly $5.7 million. A difference of $1.7 million. So even though 1% doesn't sound like much, the impact is quite significant. And as a rule of thumb, maybe the longer the investment horizon, the larger the impact of yeah, these 1% differences will be. Obviously, Andy's ability to beat the market had the greatest impact on his wealth building journey. Clearly, having the intellectual, but maybe more importantly, the emotional ability to beat the markets is probably the, probably the most difficult part that not everyone will be able to achieve. And one also has to acknowledge the downside risk here. 
if you cannot beat the market and underperform a broad benchmark index, the power of compound interest also works in reverse, of course. But the question of whether individual investors can actually beat the market should not be part of this video. You might, however, want to watch a video that I have made on this subject quite recently and, will, and I will add a link to that video to the description box down below. Well, extending your investment horizon and increasing your savings ratio, these two components, on the other hand, can very well be controlled yeah, relatively easily and are two of the most important capital growth engine components. I think it's tempting to look at your returns on a daily basis or maybe if you are, are already patient on a yearly basis. I think it's tempting to constantly check how your net worth develops. However, many of my younger viewers in particular, they will likely be work working until they are 70 with life expectations constantly increasing. So really, they should start placing more emphasis on the next 10, 20 or 30 years. Because I think having this long-term mindset is very important and it might actually yeah, prevent you from making emotional reactions to short-term news, noise and market movements. And that would, yeah, making these emotional reactions would inevitably lead to poor decision making. All right, let's wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, may your finances and investments prosper. Good luck.